Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this RedGamingTech.com video, we're going to be discussing as well as analysing tech news which, as usual, has popped up in the past 24 or so hours. I hope you're all having an amazing day. We're going to kick this video off with AMD news, specifically the Ryzen 5 3500X. This CPU could actually be pretty exciting if you're looking to build a budget gaming-focused rig, as the website JD.com have leaked the performance information, the specifications, as well as the pricing. Oh, I forgot to mention, they are a Chinese retailer, so I imagine they're probably into some hot water by uh, with AMD right now. So the 3500X is a 6-core, six 6-thread six processor. It is missing the SMT feature of the 3600 and above and has a base frequency of 3.6 GHz, a boost clock of 4.1 GHz, 32 MB of level 3 cache, TDP is 65 watts, and the memory support is 3200 MHz. So, the big story is the price and performance to me, not the specifications. The specifications are great, but how does it perform, and how many pennies is it going to cost you? Well, this chip uh, converts to around 150, 155 bucks, which is around fifty dollars cheaper than the 3600 non X, which sells for around 200 US dollars. I say around because a couple of retailers have actually seen some deals on uh, the 3600, which you can get for around 190 US dollars, which is really good. Uh, this also compares against the 9400F, which is what AMD are supposedly targeting the 3500F towards. Uh, the 9400F is uh, typically uh, advertised to retail at 180 US dollars, but the reality is it generally sells for considerably less than that. You can do a very quick Google search and you can pretty easily find it for 140, 145 ish US dollars. So in reality the 9400F is a little cheaper uh, unofficially but officially it's considerably more expensive. So what about performance which obviously is the big thing? Well AMD have run it against several gaming workloads which aren't exactly super CPU intensive. I mean, you've got games like, oh, I don't know, Fortnite and uh, Counter-Strike. The big problem I've got with these results is they're running them with a GTX 1660. Now, I'm not saying that, let's say, I don't know, Counter-Strike requires an RTX 2080 Ti to run at 1080p, but I would have liked for them to have tested with a slightly better GPU than a GTX 1660, an RTX 2060, an RX 5700, that type of card would be a really nice uh, GPU to pair with this, particularly if you've got a higher refresh rate monitor. But anyway, with these uh, tests, we can see that this CPU essentially is neck and neck with the 9400F. I would have also have liked to have seen some productivity workloads, but alas, we do not have that information. But I do think that this is going to be a really nice processor for those who don't want to go to the used market, don't want to buy an older, let's say, first or second generation Ryzen, and want to buy a CPU just purely for gaming. I think it's a pretty good off, uh, pretty good option, and it will be fascinating to see how it performs when it finally launches. Next up is the 9900KS. This is a smaller piece of news, and is the first of a couple of Intel pieces. The 9900KS you probably heard about. It is a special edition 9900K. Yes, that's what the S stands for, special. And it is, of course, retaining the 8-core, 16-thread layout of the 9900K. The differences here are clock frequency. So the 3.6 GHz uh, base frequency goes up to 4 GHz, and all-core turbo is now 5 GHz across all 8 cores. So you've got essentially 300-ish MHz and 400 MHz, respective of turbo and base, over the 9900K. What we don't know is the pricing information as well as the TDP. However, thanks to Asus, as well as a couple of retailers, we now know, well, at least we unofficially know what the TDP is, and it's 127 watts, which is around 30-ish percent, 33 percent, 
higher than the 95 watt of the 9900K. A couple of notes here. The first is that 95 watts of the 9900K assumes, of course, things like all-core turbo are not enabled, and honestly, AMD and Intel measure TDP a little bit differently. It's kind of like saying 7nm and 14nm, and you're comparing that against different fabs. Basically, different manufacturers compare these things, or rather measure these things differently. But either way, we are comparing apples with apples here, with the 9900K and 9900KS. So presumably this thing is going to suck up a lot of power, which is fine in that I don't suspect people putting, uh, buying this processor are going to be pairing it with a, you know, kind of crappy cooler. It's going to be most likely a really high-end AIO or a custom water loop, and you're probably going to be buying this with the idea of overclocking it. The 9900K essentially can hit... Uh, all core 5 gigahertz without any real issue. I'm sure there are some people who have bought some dud 9900Ks, but generally you can get 5-ish gigahertz without too much of a problem. So to me, the real reason to buy the KS is if it's uh, highly bin silicon and if you can squeeze, let's say, 5.3 or 5.4 gigahertz. It's still not going to beat a 3900X, or above from AMD in certain applications because, well, the 3900 has more processor cores, but for some tasks, like certain video encoders, uh, for gaming, the 9900KS is going to be the fastest option. And all, as always, it's just nice to have another thing to buy, another potential option on the market is never a bad thing, whether you buy it or not. It's always nice to have the choice. Speaking of choices, let's move over to the i9-10980XE. Jeez, that is a serious mouthful to say, and it is actually an update to yesterday's story. So in yesterday's story, I covered a Cascade Lake X CPU, which was the 10900, uh, which was a 10-core 10 6, 10-core uh, uh, 20 thread part. I was about to say 10-core 16 thread part, and this is a 18-core 36 thread CPU. And thanks to Geekbench, we have an idea of how it performs along with some specifications. So it is scoring 5,381 for single core, which is pretty decent and 51,514 for the multi-core score. Uh, multi -core score. If you add a .gb4 to that, uh, then you can see that the CPU, generally speaking, is hitting around the 4700 MHz range. Obviously, it's going a little bit lower and a little bit higher, depending on what's uh, happening with the benchmark, which is pretty impressive. If you compare that to yesterday's Shark Tooth results, if you missed that, that is the third generation Threadripper, which of course is based on the Zen 2 architecture, but does have more cores. It's 32 cores, 64 threads, although it is uh, not supposedly the highest end Threadripper part that's coming. There is going to be uh, a workstation variant which is said to be up to 64 cores, and there are some other benchmarks which leaked yesterday, so check out yesterday's video if you want more information, but the Geekbench 4 result of Shark Tooth, which leaked yesterday, tells us that the single core score was 5519, and the multi-core score is 68279. So obviously, uh, that does mean it's outperforming this particular uh, result. But then again, it still is faster than what we've seen from uh, Intel's ninth generation CPUs. The website hothardware.com have put a comparison together uh, with Geekbench 4.2.2 with the uh, leaked 10980XE results against the 7980XE along with various thread ripper parts, and you can see just how well this CPU performs. Anyway, I think that's just about it for today's video. With any luck, you've enjoyed it, so if you did, the normal stuff, like, share, comment and subscribe, because it does help us out an absolute ton, and I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.